Good morning. Welcome to Southside Baptist Church. I'm Kim Baird. Um, you all know if you've watched this before um, that I've done this several times. Um, this lesson that we're going to be doing today, it actually is lesson or it's session five. Um, I think I taught the second one, if I look back and look correctly. So we've had convicted by the Spirit, born again by the Spirit, indwelt by the Spirit, filled with the Spirit. Now, last week took a little bit of a break because that was the 4th of July, um, and it was a special lesson. But this week is called Walking with the Spirit, and it's actually um, some of the scriptures is some of my favorite. Um, I used to, I remember doing this at Vacation Bible School, um, which we just did here a few weeks ago here at church. Um, but... It'll be a good lesson. We're going to be in Galatians chapter 5 this morning. If you want to get your Bible out or you want to get your book out, um, again, it's called Walking with the Spirit, and we're going to be in Galatians chapter 5. And before we, um, before we get started this morning, I want us to have a word of prayer. Um, there's quite a few people, you know, in our, in our little world that we live in here in Princeton and our community and our church. Um, there's, of course, lots and th of things that go on in our world that we hear about every single day whenever we wake up and we turn the news on. And I want us just to have a minute of prayer before we um, get started. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we have to come and share um, just a small portion of your scripture, Lord, and um, things that you want to teach us about that scripture and how we should live our lives. Heavenly Father, there are people that are hurting this morning. Lord, there are people that have lost loved ones. We have people in our church right now that have COVID. Um, Lord, that they are trying their best to get through it and, and heal from that. Lord, there's people that are in the hospital that just need a special touch from you. Lord, we just pray, Heavenly Father, that you will be with all of these that need your touch in a special way. Heavenly Father, we live in a world that is not perfect. It is filled with things that um, are not the fruit of the Spirit, which is what we're going to talk about in just a few minutes. And Lord, we just pray that, Lord, somehow through the scripture that we look at today, that, Father, somehow you'll show us, show me, as I've studied this lesson, how I can be um, a better Christian and how I can incorporate the fruits of the Spirit in my life um, daily, Lord, and in everything that I do. Again, Lord, bless those in a special way that are hurting. Lord, we ask you to be with our service that will be to follow, Lord, and watch over those that are watching this, Lord, um, on the television. And Lord, if there's something that those that someone were to need, Heavenly Father, that they will reach out to our church and, and speak to anyone. Um, we, we have so many people here that would just, you know, take time to talk to anyone that needed it. Again, Lord, thank you for this day and be with us as, as we go through this lesson. In your precious son's name, I pray these things. Amen. Okay, so we're going to be in Galatians chapter 5, and the point of our lesson is the Holy Spirit leads us to display the fruit of godly character. So I'm going to read at the beginning of the lesson, you know, they have a little story where it's called The Bible Meets Life. It says, in an online article, Jim Rohn has identified six essential traits of good character. The traits he listed are integrity, honesty, loyalty, self-sacrifice, accountability, and self-control. These are good traits that square with the biblical idea of character. Still, while his article remain, explains what these traits are and why they are important, he offered nothing about how to develop those traits or this good character. We understand the importance of character, but being a person of unimpeachable character is a struggle. How do we do it? In Galatians 5, Paul argued that even the law could not change a person's character. To live with the right character, that is godly character, we must be changed by God from the inside out. So the setting of the scripture where we're going to start in Galatians 5, the Galatian church was being troubled by those who were arguing that in order to be saved, a person needed to follow the law of Moses in addition to putting faith in Christ. Paul argued that salvation is through faith in Christ alone. However, this is not to be used as an excuse for living in sin, but rather believers should live in obedience to God by walking with the Spirit. So there was a question at the beginning of this lesson, and again, our point is the Holy Spirit leads us to display the fruit of godly character. 
And the question that they, the very first question that they ask you to think about as we look at these um, scriptures, it says, what childhood experience taught you the importance of character? What childhood experience taught you the importance of character? And when I was thinking about that, I, I can, I could say a couple of them. You know, I, I could say um, whenever I didn't get along with my brother and sister and how my parents dealt with that, I could say about the one time that I remember when we had the dime store here in town and I took a piece of candy out there out of that store without paying for it. And my mama saw me open it up whenever I got out onto the sidewalk. And she's like, where did that come from? Because she always let us have a little bag. I mean, I, a lot of y'all don't remember this, but literally you could walk out of there with a whole, almost a whole bag full of candy for less than a dollar because it was just penny and nickel stuff. Now I had to go back into that store and I had to take that nickel in there that I had not paid them for. And I had, and that, that taught me character. I did not ever, ever want to take something without paying for it again. So I know that we've all had those experiences. We have them as children. We have them as teenagers, as young adults, and we even still have them today. So we're going to move into our lesson. We're going to pray and hope that through this lesson that God will teach us through the scripture that as a Christian, our change is supposed to be from the inside outwards. And again, using the fruit of the spirit that we're going to talk about in just a few minutes. So we start in Galatians chapter 5 and we're going to start with verse 16. I say then, walk by the spirit and you will certainly not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is against the spirit, and the, and the spirit desires what is against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you don't do what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Okay, so again, and I have to say this to myself, I'm, I'm speaking to myself as well as I am to anyone that's listening. The key to godly character is to walk by the spirit. Now we know that in scripture, we know that if we hear any type of uh, Baptist minister or anyone really that's a clergy speak, often it's talked about how walking, walking is a metaphor for the Christian life. Walking by the spirit suggests a, a life lived in communion with God through the Holy Spirit. Just as the disciples once walked with Jesus, now all believers can walk with the spirit. That's us. Once you ask God into your Christ into your heart, you're a believer. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to walk with the Spirit. Paul emphasized having a relationship that motivates us to follow the Holy Spirit. When Paul wrote to the Colossian believers, he instructed them. This comes out of Colossian, Colossians 3, 2. Set your mind on things above not on earthly things. When our minds are occupied with the things of this world, we have difficulty keeping in step with the Holy Spirit. When we intentionally think about, dwell on, and meditate on the things of God's kingdom, we find the Spirit leading our lives more easily. Saturating our minds with scripture has a way of pushing out the things of this world. When I read that um, particular a sentence in this book, it reminded me, and, and I may have said this before, I can't remember, but back on Mother's Day, we had a Mother's Day program here for all of the ladies in the church, and um, for the Dane's wife, Cindy, spoke to all of us, and she had a couple of other ladies come up there with her um, to talk about how scripture impacts their lives, and if we really, really try hard, and I know it's hard, I know it's difficult, I was a school teacher, it's hard to memorize things, but if we really, really try hard, even if we can't memorize it for whatever reason, if we just keep something like a little um, reference card with us, you know, I, I do this often, I'll pull up my phone and I can pull up a scripture within a matter of just, you know, typing it in. And in seconds, I can share it with somebody. So even if I don't remember the scripture, like if I, have, if I, if I can't memorize it for whatever reason, if I have a reference point, 
like the Romans Road or John 3.16 or the 23rd Psalm, which are some of my favorites. Um, that gives us a, a basis for building our Christian lives and for helping us walk that walk that God wants us to walk every day. We're going to look at the next scripture, and it says, Walking by the Spirit keeps us from fulfilling sinful desires. In the next verses, we see that walking in the flesh leads to sinful behavior. Now, these are the verses that we don't want to think about. These are the verses that we deal with living in this world, and, and it's not a, a pure world. We know that. We know from history, when, if we read the Old Testament, we know that there's times that God completely destroyed this earth because of human nature. And it's sad to say, but our human nature is still not much better today um, than what it was a thousand years ago. But God's word is still true, and that doesn't mean that we shouldn't strive to do better. So we're going to look at the things that God doesn't want us to do, okay? These are the fleshly um, behaviors. So I'm still in Galatians chapter 5. And I want to read verses 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, strife, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, Factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. I am warning you about these things, as I warned you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So these are some really yucky, yucky things that we think about. However, um, we all know that they exist. We all know that they happen every day. Um, hopefully they don't happen in your life every day. But there are times, I would say, different times of our lives maybe, whenever we've either experienced it personally or someone in our family has experienced some of these things. Um, maybe we've even just experienced it at the workplace or just in our daily lives, um, just with people that we come in contact with. So sexual sins we know are bad. Those would be the sexual immorality, the moral impurity, and the promiscuity. Unfortunately, we see a lot of that from a young age. Um, that's why I try to say this to parents, and I, I've said it all of the years that I taught. Watch what your kids watch on television. If they have a phone, watch what they're seeing. You know, um, block what you don't want them to see. Don't let them have their TV on past a certain time if they had one in a bedroom. Don't let them look at certain material uh, when they go in certain stores. Um, watch the way that you dress your kids. You know, and I know some people don't think about that, but we live in a world now where there's so many people that look at young children in a, in a very impure way. You know, just because you think that that little spaghetti strap thing, oh, well... She's just nine. She can wear that. Or, you know, those shorts are okay, even if they might be a little bit short. Maybe they fit a little bit tight. All I'm going to say is, because yes, I know my kids probably wore something at some point that I didn't really want them to. Just be careful about that. that. You're not always going to be with church people. You're not always going to be with Christian people. And Christian people are not always going to have pure thoughts either in this world. Just be careful. God gave you those children. We, we, our world is so up in an uproar right now about Roe versus Wade and all that kind of stuff. And I don't want to get into that. But, you know, children are a blessing. They're gifts from God. And um, I guess if I could say that that's like a little soapbox. You know, I, I hear people say, oh, I, I want a child. I want a child. I pray for a child. You know, when God gives you a child, that is a gift. So it is our responsibility as grown-ups, as the parents, and anyone that helps raise that child to raise them in a way that would make God honored. And again, 
that's my little soapbox for today, but I, I taught school for a long time and I watched little kids that weren't in the best of environments and I guess that's, that's where my feelings come from. Um, it talked about idolatry and sorcery. We know all that. We, we're not supposed to worship anything. Nothing is supposed to come before God the Father. Okay? Hatred and strife. Um, unfortunately, we know that that exists. Sins against our community. Jealousy, anger, um, selfishness, dissensions. You know what dissensions are, factions. You know, little cliques, little groups, little... Um, this one over here's got this, and this one over here's got this, and kids at school do it even. You know, they want to have these little groups. God doesn't like that. I, the older I get, the truly I believe God just sees us as people. He just sees us just as pure. You know, he, he just sees us for who we are, and he doesn't like that kind of stuff. Um, the last three that are mentioned are sins of decadence, which is envy, drunkenness, carousing. And then he even says anything else that might be similar to any of those. What that's basically saying is God sees the ugly. He sees anything that's not good and he doesn't like it. And he doesn't want us to put anything like that above him. When Paul said those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God, he identified in no uncertain terms the end result of the works of the flesh. The flesh leads to sin, death, and hell. But people who belong to God do not live this way. Another question just for you to consider, and you, I'm not going to talk about it, but it says, what stands out to you about this list of sinful behavior? If you relate it to your family, your friends, your workplace, what you watch on TV, it's kind of scary. There was another question that I thought was very important just to think about. It says, what deeds of the flesh are downplayed or even condoned in our culture today? And man, you don't have to think about that for very long, do you? You know, I've just turned on TV, the news, the first minute or two, you'll be bombarded. But God, God has a better plan. And that's what I want us to talk about these last little bit in our, in our time together. It says, in the next verses, we see that walking by the Spirit produces Christ-like behavior. Praise the Lord. I love these next scriptures. And these, this would be a great, this scripture today would be a great one to put on your list to prioritize, to share with somebody. Um, or I think it would be. So we're still in Galatians 5. Now we're down in, to verse 22. But the Spirit, the, excuse me. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with, the, with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. The Holy Spirit produces godly character in the lives of the believers. As we pursue the life in the Spirit, He grows fruit in our lives that reflects the character of our Father. Now, how awesome is that? <laughs> I mean, that brings a smile to your face. I might have tears one second, but I mean, whenever you talk about the fruit of the Spirit, oh my goodness, thank you, Lord. I just want to say it so loudly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for giving us all of these. Love, joy, peace, patience. Oh my goodness, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The flesh tempts us to spiritual infidelity, but the Holy Spirit produces faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. We faithfully follow the Lord Jesus because of our love for Him. The Christian life involves choosing to walk. Here it is, walk. Walk in the Spirit, which means not indulging the desires of our flesh. As we do this daily, the Spirit produces His godly character in us. He leads us away from the deeds of the flesh and grows us in the fruit of a godly life. Now, how do we get closer to God in those fruits of the Spirit? Okay, so I noticed Sunday we had a lot of people that weren't here. I know it's summertime. I know that people are on vacation with their families and um, lots of kids are, just have a short amount of time to do things and before they get back involved with school stuff. But you guys, I'm going to say this. 
I don't know who watches and I don't know who's watching today, but church attendance is really important. Being here and being in a Sunday school class, being with other, having your kids with other kids that are learning about Christ. Some of my best memories are coming to church and learning songs, Bible songs, learning scripture. Um, I mean, kids at a young age need to be involved at church. Then you say, oh, well, when they get older, they don't need it as much. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. You still send them to regular school, right? So you should be coming. You should, you know, regular school takes up five days of the week. They, don't, they only get the chance sometimes to come to church on Sundays. Thank you if you're bringing them on Wednesday nights because we have a lot of good things going on. But bring your kids to, to church. Bring yourself to church. Put yourself in an environment where you're around other believers, other Christians. And I know I've heard it. People say, oh, well, so-and-so down there did this. and So-and-so down there. And I don't like them. And they said, guess what? We're all sinners saved by grace. And praise God again. What did he give us? He gave us the fruits of the Spirit when we believe in him. Now, did he give it just to me? No. Did he give it just to you? No. God gives it to everybody. So if he can forgive me 70 times 7 and 70 times 7, he can forgive other people for whatever they've done. Again, God knows that we're not perfect. I'm sad, sad to say it, but we're, we're just not. You know, we're just not. Anyway, um, let's see. Which aspect of the fruit of the Spirit do you feel is most evident in your life? Which is most challenging? Okay, so some of them are harder. Okay, like I remember whenever I was raising my kids, I wanted God to give me lots of patience. Well, you do know what happens when you ask for patience, right? If you've never looked that up, take a minute. Because most of the time, God will give you just a little bit more. Because if you're asking for it, well, he has to teach it to you. So patience was a hard one for me. It still is. I try really hard. Um, love. Love comes easier for most people, I think. Goodness. Goodness is a relative term. So, um, you know, maybe you need to find someone. Like, I know there's a lady here in church, and I won't mention her name. But she just... She just exudes goodness to me. She's always doing something good for someone else. She's always sharing a little goodie bag or a word of encouragement. She gives little cards to people. I mean, wow. And sometimes I say, oh, I want to be like her. Well, you know what? God doesn't want all of us to be like just one person. God wants us to be ourselves. Find our little niche where we can do what we need to do for what God's asking us to do. I know it's hard. I mean, goodness gracious, just living in this crazy world is hard enough, right? The Holy Spirit leads us to display the fruit of godly character. Godly character. We have to remember to do that, guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. I want to take a minute. I want to go back and read this scripture. And I'm going to read it a little bit slowly. And I want you to think about each of these things and think about that question. Which aspect of the fruit of the Spirit is most evident in your life? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. Now, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Um, we all know that story about um, footprints in the sand, where there's two footprints when you're walking with Jesus. And sometimes there's only one. And you look behind and you say, hey, why did you leave me? Well, God wasn't the one that left us. He was the one that was carrying us through those times of despair. Assess your walk. Examine your life for areas where you follow the flesh. Confess those sins, turn from them, and ask God to fill you with His Holy Spirit. When I read this lesson the first time, 
I, I just immediately just stopped and I prayed and I said, Lord, please forgive me. And you know what? We need to do that every day. We really do. Walking by the Spirit requires setting aside time for Him. And you know what? Maybe it's only five minutes, but I think, because I know in my own life, when I do take the time to pray to God every day, when I do take the time to get in a quiet spot, I can feel the Holy Spirit working inside me. I can feel Him talking to me about what areas He wants me to look at, how He wants me to re-examine areas of my life that I need help with. That still small voice, even from the time that you became a Christian, don't let it get to the point where it doesn't talk to you. Prayer is one of the best tools that we have. Talked about coming to church, prayer, um, you know, having Christian friends. All of those things will help build us up. Walking in the Spirit means we take every thought captive to obey Christ. Rely on the Spirit so that your thoughts honor Him. And then there's a, there's a scripture shared at the end of the lesson. It says Philippians, it's in Philippians 4 verse 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence, if there is anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. Anything true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable. All that does, guys, is just reiterate what is told to us about the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5, verses 22 through 25. The Holy Spirit leads us to display the fruit of godly character. We just need to stop, slow down. And in this world, it can be difficult to slow down. But we really need to do that. We need to do better than the works of the flesh. We need to present ourselves wholly to God as much as we can and in the best possible way that we can. Okay, before we end up, I want us to thank God for giving us His Holy Spirit that lives in our life. And I want us to ask God to give us the strength that we need to do better of avoiding the fleshly um, world, avoiding the, the fleshly things that we see. Maybe we look on social media and we automatically see things we shouldn't. Um, maybe it's just the people that we're around. And we just need to work a little bit harder on not spending as much time with those people and find us a loving church family or a loving Christian uh, co-worker to share things with. All right, let's take just a minute. I want us to pray to close out, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we've read some amazing scripture today that's talked about um, the fruits of the Spirit. And Lord, when you talk about the fruit of the Spirit, unfortunately we have to talk about the works of the flesh. And Lord, we're going to pray right now really hard that right now, today, and in the coming days, that as Christians, that we'll be able to avoid some of those fleshly things, Lord, and that as we try to walk closer to you, that we will lean on this scripture and that we will know that you want to share your love, your joy, your peace, your happiness. You want us to have your kindness and your goodness, your faithfulness, Lord, all of those things. And you give them to us, Lord, whenever we ask you into our life. And Lord, we're, I'm asking you to... to to share these, if they don't have them already, Lord, with someone that's watching, I ask, Lord, that they'll they'll reach out, they'll pick up their Bible, they'll pick up their phone, they'll they'll read their scriptures, Lord, and that they'll become a Christian and ask you into their lives. And Lord, if they want to visit or they want to reach out and talk to someone here at church, Lord, I ask that you will let them do that. Lord, as we know in the last few weeks, as we've been living in this world, it's been kind of tough. Um, to listen to the things that are going on. But Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will help us. I pray that you will help this church and the people in it to be a lighthouse for you, where that we are better fruits for you, Lord, fruits of the Spirit. 
and that our light will shine, Lord, brighter every day. And Lord, they can only do that if we ask you to help us. And, and Lord, I ask you to help me today in a special way.